Finally, our hometown host, Emily Ramshaw, with, uh, who is the uh, Texas Tribune editor and enthu enthusiast. And uh, on her Twitter bio, she says, I retweet because I'm interested, aren't you? So I think it's a challenge for everyone in the audience with Emily. So, Emily. Hi, everybody. My name is Emily Ramshaw. Uh, and as Michael said, I'm here to represent the home team, the Texas Tribune. Uh, and I see lots of super amigos of our own out here in the audience. So um, we are thrilled to have you all. Um, we launched in 2009 uh, really at what felt like sort of the height of unease around the traditional uh, revenue model for journalism. Uh, we launched as a nonprofit, nonpartisan, a politics and policy news organization uh, fit, focused primarily uh, only on Texas, although there's a little national coverage mixed in there. Um, for us, the initial step on this path obviously had to be great journalism, uh, and really we've taken a three-pronged approach to, to uh, telling those stories. Uh, the first is traditional, you know, dogged beat reporting. We have reporters who cover basically every key policy vertical in Texas. Um, we have a fleet of reporters, you know, sort of running up and down the halls of the Capitol. And we actually have reporters who've been on the campaign trail. Texas, as many of you know, politically is the gift that keeps on giving. And our elected officials here keep deciding or flirting with running for president. So we've had reporters uh, in the national space, too. Um, we started with about five to seven beat reporters in 2010, our first full year of operation. Um, we're now up to about 15 to 17, plus a TV crew, um, plus a border bureau, a reporter up and down the Texas-Mexico border, uh, plus two reporters now who are primarily investigative in nature, which is a space that we're hoping to move into a lot more. Um, our content strategy, we provide, in addition to sort of around-the-clock politics and policy news on our site, we provide a double truck, old newspaper word for you, of uh, content in the New York Times uh, on Fridays and Sundays. Basically, if you pick up a New York Times in Texas on a Friday or Sunday, you'll see two pages of Texas-specific content. That's a paid relationship that we have with them, and that's been instrumental for our reporters, for our, um, our perceptions out in the world. It's been very valuable. Um, we also offer, as part of our mission and our business model, all of our content free of charge to every news organization in Texas, everywhere from, you know, Fort Worth all the way west to El Paso. Basically, if you go to a small town in Texas and pick up the local newspaper, you'll see Texas Tribune bylines and content. Same thing with the video coverage. Uh, we produce packages that run on TV stations across Texas, radio stations. Same deal. Basically, our goal is to make sure uh, every news organization in Texas has access to news coming out of the Capitol for free. Um, the second prong of our journalism is really data. From the very beginning, we focused on big data as being crucial to what we do. Uh, we believe that any uh, data that we can get publicly from state entities should be easily accessible and searchable uh, to our readers. Um, we have a soon-to-be four-member news apps team, we would like it to be even bigger than that, that does everything from build major data explorers, say, tracking every uh, readily, readily available piece of data on all 8,000 public schools in Texas, um, to uh, interactive maps tracking the increasingly dwindling number of abortion clinics in Texas. Um, we also create interactive widgets. This one is an example from uh, election nights previous, where basically we offer embeddable tools where other news organizations or bloggers can say, you know what, uh, I just care about elections in X, Y, and Z communities. I'm going to build this interactive widget and embed it on our site, and then they have election results in real time, the same way the Texas Tribune has those results in real time. Um, so the third prong of our journalism endeavor really is events. Uh, we believe very strongly that events are journalism. We believe that our readers, that our users, should be able to be in the same room uh, with the people who represent them, the same room with the people who they vote for and the people who they, and we want to hold accountable. Um, we have, uh, in addition to a sort of series of free morning breakfast uh, appearances that we have almost once a week at this point, um, we have basically a traveling road show where we bring policy-specific symposiums, whatever the plural of that is, symposia, uh, to university campuses around the state uh, where you'll have people from the community who attend these events, policymakers who represent those issues and those communities at these events, and also tons of students, which is huge for us and great for our outreach among young readers. 
Um, we also have the annual Texas Tribune Festival, which is a, a major event that we actually host on the University of Texas campus, two to three days every September, virtually a who's who of politics and policy in Texas and in some cases nationally. Uh, it, last year, I think we had 2,500 attendees. We're hoping for it to be even higher this year, and most of those are paid attendees, unlike our other events, which are free to the public. Um, so obviously you can't have the journalism without the business model, and I'm just going to pivot quickly. Some of you in the audience may have been uh, at the Revenue Summit this week, but I'm going to just give a very brief overview uh, of our business model. Um, when we started, we really identified five broad streams of revenue, uh, areas where we thought we were going to be able to, to make our nonprofit model work. Uh, major individual donors, for lack of a better word, uh, very wealthy people who care in a very big way about journalism. Uh, foundations, obviously the Knight Foundation was a huge original supporter of us, Ford Foundation, basically these are grant requests of uh, very big foundations who also support these initiatives. Um, corporate sponsorships, uh, which is effectively corporate underwriting for the kind of work we do. You'll see their uh, advertising and sort of banner ads uh, across our site and on the different sections of our site. Um, memberships, this is sort of the, the viewers like you that you've seen for a long time in public television and public radio. Everything from the $10 student membership up to people who give $100 or $200 or $500 a year to support our work. Um, and finally, events, which is what I talked about a minute ago. Again, a small portion of that revenue is from people attending the events. Really, uh, it's bigger picture, that's corporate underwriting of those events. So um, just before I talk about those revenue streams specifically for a minute, I'll just give you a brief uh, overview of our vital signs. Uh, if you look at 2010, you'll see we had about uh, 29 staffers, revenue of about 2.25 million, and expense of about 2.9 million. Uh, it doesn't take a mathematician to look at those numbers and think that you want to flip those uh, revenue and expense numbers pretty darn fast. Um, if you look to the last full year, 2013, caveat, these numbers are not yet audited, but they're pretty darn close. Uh, we had grown to a staff of 40. You'll see our total revenue for the full last year was about 5.4 million. Uh, expense closer to 4.7 million. So obviously, uh, those are numbers we were happy about and we're moving in the right direction. Um, so just to look at our revenue breakdown, uh, if you'll see, this is our full, first full year, 2010. Um, individual donors and foundations made up a, an overwhelming, a huge percentage of the revenue that we had coming in the door. That's fantastic, and we really want to rely on those streams of revenue um, in a big way going forward. But I think if you look at it and you think about um, risk and you think about diversity, it was important to us to even out those numbers, to be sort of closer to a fifth, a fifth, a fifth across those revenue streams. If there's a rough economic time, you know, if suddenly your individual donors and your foundation money is drying up, you want to make sure that you have what we call earned revenue, those bottom three categories uh, coming in the door in the big way. So uh, fast forward to 2013, our uh, most recent full year, again, unaudited, but pretty close. We're getting closer to 20% across all of those categories. You'll see that individual donors and foundations are still a huge part of what we do, but corporate sponsorships and advertising had shot to 23%. Events at a huge 22% and membership we're thrilled about. I mean, that's a number that just continues to grow. So we've been uh, very excited in that space. Um, just a couple of uh, quick initiatives that we're working on right now that sort of blend um, innovative journalism with potential new revenue streams. Um, some of you who are from Texas may have known that there was a very prominent filibuster in our legislative session this past year uh, where Wendy Davis, who's now running for governor, uh, filibustered the state's very strict abortion regulations. Um, we'd been live streaming the legislature for a while. People tuned in here and there. Not that sexy. It's a bunch of lawmakers standing debating a lot of issues. That Wendy Davis live stream, that filibuster night, you know, midnight till 2 in the morning, we had uh, close to 200,000 people uh, watching our live stream. For context, that's more people than watched Edward Snowden when we live streamed him a couple of weeks ago at South by Southwest. So... We piggybacked on that and thought um, we launched a Kickstarter campaign to raise the funds to purchase really top-of-the-line live streaming technology so that we could be out in the field, uh, out covering the governor's race and live streaming these, these uh, events from the trail. We ended up raising even more than this 65000 close to $85,000 that we used to purchase satellite backpacks, editing in the field software uh, tools. So that's been really uh, phenomenal and a lot of fun. Um, you know, this is sort of a, a, a new school twist on old school newsletters. We've been rolling out uh, a series of e-newsletters that focus on particular policy verticals. We're calling them Trib Plus, 
Texas Tribune plus something extra, um, uh, partnering with, in many cases, um, universities, researchers, so far, we've rolled out Trib Plus Water and Trib Plus EDU. I think we'll probably have a transportation site in the coming months, and then we'll probably have three more of these um, by the fall. Uh, and then finally, um, we are next month rolling out something that we're calling Trib Talk which is really uh, an op-ed site sort of for the, the 21st century. We're going to be um, including uh, solicited op-eds from key policymakers across the state, submitted op-eds um, from folks you know, in our community. We're hoping for a really robust uh, commenting uh, universe, uh, very closely moderated. Uh, and we're also going to be using this site really as sort of a design laboratory to think about some innovative things we can do on the Texas Tribune and potentially uh, as also a sort of innovative advertising space uh, we are going to be probably experimenting with sponsored content in, in some paid placement format on this site. Um, so that's the Texas Tribune in a nutshell. Thanks for being here and I look forward to